So how many of you think that it is harder to get into a great university, let's say one of the top 5% of universities in the US, than it was 30 years ago? All right, there's a reason you all believe that. It is uh, the top schools are somewhere between 25 and 50% more selective. Their admissions rates are lower than they were, and yet it's not true. So, I've been looking at this for years now, first at Prince Review, then at 2U and Noodle, and it turns out that it's wildly easier to get into a top school than it used to be. I'm gonna show you why that's true and then show you how to deal with it. So, there are about 9% more kids coming out of high school now than 30 years ago. And they're not worse educated than kids were back then, but they're not much better educated. A couple more go to uh, college. Overall, the percentage of kids who are ready for an elite university is up about 15% in that time. But those elite schools have all added classrooms, they've all added dorms, and the mix of schools has changed. Because of the cost of college, state schools like U Michigan and UNC Chapel Hill have gotten incredibly popular and have risen through the rankings, and some private schools like USC or NYU have as well uh, 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 lifted into the top tier. Overall, there are 45% more seats at the elite schools, at the top 100 schools, for 15% more kids. And that's after adjusting for international students. It is provably easier. So the question is why everybody thinks it's harder and why those admissions rates are plummeting. And the answer is US News. So, any college admissions officer will tell you that U.S. News matter, uh, rankings matter a lot. That high rankings translate into better alumni giving, they translate into more elite students wanting to come to your school, and they'll also tell you that there's an almost perfect correlation between your U.S. News ranking and your selectivity. That if you want to quickly raise your ranking, the way to do it is to lower your admissions rate. So, what is admissions rates? It, it is the number of kids you admit divided by the number of applicants, right? So how do you raise the, 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 the applicants and lower the admits? Well, the first thing you do is you start admitting more kids early. Why is that? Because if I admit you regular admission, other schools have as well. I might get you and I might not. But if I admit you early, you're coming, right? So I can admit fewer kids and still fill my seats. And meanwhile, electronic applications in the Common App have made it much, much easier to apply to more schools. Back in the day, students bound for elite schools applied to three to five schools. Now they apply to 10 to 15. So here's the math. Imagine a school that was 30% admit back some number of years ago, two decades ago, three decades ago. Well, by clever use of early decision, they have lowered the percentage, they lowered the number of kids that they admitted by 25%. But meanwhile, all those applicants have applied to two and a half times as many schools. That school is now 9% admit. Everything is the same. Same school, same kids. Every school is wildly more selective. Right? The only reason that, that admissions rates haven't plummeted even more than they have are those extra seats I spoke about. So, what that means is that any one great school is wildly harder to get into than it used to be, but it's wildly easier than it used to be to get into one of the great schools. And that's confusing, and the best way to understand it is dating. <laughs> so back in the day, Right, we, uh, you got a matchmaker and you got two families and get them together and he's gonna date one girl and she's gonna date one guy and that's it. And if it doesn't work out between them, it's a crisis, it's a disaster, it could be a musical. <laughs> but now, now, you're gonna see a lot of people before you get married and the person you marry will have seen a lot of people before they marry you. It's not better or worse, it's not more selective or less selective, it's just a different paradigm, it's a different process. 
right? And, and in the same way for, for, for schools, you've got students applying to schools all over the country, using technology, using transportation to broaden their options. Now, what that, what that is, is not just college admissions, but across the education landscape, there's a huge thing going on. It used to be that your city told you where to go to school, your state told you where to go to college if you were going to college, and then if you needed ongoing professional development of some sort, your company told you to, where to go for that. And now, you pick your school, you pick your tutors or coaches or, uh, or, or anything you're looking for, and, uh, and that choice, I think is great, but not everybody thinks it's great, and for good reason. Uh, there are at least three TED Talks on decision anxiety or choice anxiety. My favorite one is Barry Schwartz, who gives a compelling talk on why choice makes people miserable. <laughs> and, and I understand that, so the bar is set that we not only have to get into a great school, but we have to do so without being miserable. So, the good news is, that, uh, that whether you decided to have this choice, whether you wanted to have all these choices, and if I can lower your stress or not, that these changes, this, in, this use of technology and this increased competition is driving tremendous change in both K-12 and higher ed. That over the next decade or two, you're gonna see plummeting tuitions and you're gonna see better education with better outcomes. This is overall a good thing but it is hard. And for you, thinking about college admissions, think about for a minute an 18th century novel and you look across the moor and there's this beautiful woman and you say, I'm, I'm, I'm in love with her. I must have her. If I can't marry her, my life is over. And think about now when counselors, well-meaning counselors and parents are saying, look, let's find the perfect school for you and then get in there. And in both cases, this is a very kind of uh, high stress, low odds kind of approach to either love or admissions. <laughs> a better approach is you say, look, here are 14 schools that you could love. So of the thousands of options you have, you're gonna pick 14 schools that are great for you. And that's harder than it sounds and you've gotta harden your heart for a couple reasons. First, it's hard to find 14 great schools that you, if you got in that school and nowhere else, you'd be the happiest kid in the country, right? That's not trivial. But it's also, you gotta harden your heart because you can't fall in love with one of them. These are 14 schools that we are indifferent. Any one of them would be great. Number two, we're gonna use early decision and there are all sorts of early options now in admissions that are, it's also much different than it was back, back before. Um, we're gonna use the early option aggressively in the same way colleges are using it aggressively. Number three, we're gonna ignore a lot of really bad advice about safeties and reaches. So those were what you thought about 30 years ago, but you shouldn't think about them now. You have 14 shots. If you apply to a school you don't really wanna go to, or if you apply to a school that you have no shot at getting in, you've just wasted some of those shots. Right? It's 14 great schools that you want to go to, and you got to be comfortable not getting into all of them. And in fact, base, baseball players, great baseball players know, you get into, you know, you get a hit three out of 10 at bats, you're an all-star. And here, if we get into three or four schools out of those 14, that's awesome because we can only go to one school. Right? If you do that, if you think about this process smart, you change the game. It's no longer, can I get into this one school I'm desperate to get into? What are my odds there? To, what are the odds of getting into three or four of the best schools in the country from which I'll fall in love with and attend one? Now, there's one more thing. Back when we were totally obsessed with one person or one school, we thought a lot about how do we make them fall in love with us? What do I have to be to be the perfect match for this woman, to be the perfect applicant for this school? But when you're talking to 14 schools, you can't be the perfect match for all of them. So what you have to focus on is just being your best you. So whether you love 
unicycles or lacrosse or, or uh, biology or chess, whatever you love, you should be doing it a lot. You should be doing it to excess. Immerse in who you are and what you love. Be passionate about something and pursue that passion. And some of those schools that you apply to are gonna love that and welcome you with open arms. And the others, it's not that they don't love you, it's that they already have a lacrosse goalie, they already have a unicyclist or enough journalists on their journalism department, and that's okay. Again, we can only go to one school. So let's recap. The education world is changing, and it's changing quickly. It is far easier, provably easier, to go to a great school than it was, but only if you harden your heart, ignore bad advice, and be your best self. Thanks and good luck. <laughs>